Allons-y alors. Vous avez votre FSDL. Well, go for it. Vous avez votre FSDL quelque part. Your FSDL. Et donc vous avez un répertoire test. Alors est-ce que c'est Is there and you have a test folder. Is that important? Should it be called test? Yes, it should be called test. Uh, fragrance addresses are not registered or recorded. They're locally solved, and they start by test star. So, for example, if you're creating a first site, let's call it Hello World. Premier site Frogens sur l'écran, et eh bien, um, je that's a good name. We could call it this address. It will only run on my computer, Alors, and I will, I will, with this, I, I, will, I will be able to develop. So, in the test folder, I'm going to create another folder, which is going to be called Hello World. Okay. Are there any limits in, in terms of what names you can give? Well, a province address is an international address, so you can use it, you can write the address in 179 languages from right to left or left to right. L'adresse Frogens doit être en fait puisque c'est une adresse de développement. But it's a development address and it only has ASCII characters. A to Z, zero to nine. You can put a dash. It should be. Entendu. Mais c'est provisoire. It should not be capitalized. Avant d'ouvrir puisque là j'ai mis un répertoire mais je n'ai pas mis aucun contenu dans. So far. There is no content, okay, in the folder. So, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to create a document. I'm going to call it home.fsdl. Is that important? Yes, very important. It's going to ask me if I accept to change the extension, and of course the answer is yes. Uh, yes, it is very important. Um, when you enter this address, um, the, home, the home page of the Frogan site will be called home.fsdl. Le dispositif so, pour euh, le, le, cette, cette, ce test, euh, quand il s'agira de mettre. So, this is the test. Once you start putting actual Frogan's addresses on, on Internet, the developer can then, of course, give a different name. You don't need. You could, for example, if you want a dynamic script, if you want to give it a different name, um, you can do that. But for the time being and for. Uh, to keep it simple, we're going Alors, to do FSDL, this. So, home FSDL. FSDL mais, uh, vide. So, I've, I've created this document, which is empty. So, let's open it up. Here it is. It's blank. As you can see, there is nothing inside. So, what do you think is going to happen if I open this Frogans site? Jean Emmanuel, what do you think? I have no idea. Well, let's take a look. Eh bien, on, voit, on vient de voir apparaître it un, says, un objet uh, sur notre écran. There is an object which popped up on the screen. Uh, I hope you can see this. It says on reconnaît le logo de the, uh, the, the Frogans player, the, the Frogans Frogans player logo, logo. And it says XML parsing error. The XML declaration en fait, was not found. So this uh, object is my first missed. Frogan's site. Uh, it's, a, it's an error message. And uh, it's actually displayed in, uh, in a format uh, created by uh, Frogan's. So let me stop here for a second. And uh, this is uh, obviously an error. So when you're developing, Un système d'erreur, de rapport d'erreur. Um, you know, you can get errors. So we've tried to have a very full, and complete set of errors. That way, if you're using F FSDL, uh, you can work faster. So instead of having, uh, you know, hard to understand, very technical errors, you will see that when something goes wrong, if there is something complicated that does go wrong, if you're using, um, you know, uh, the wrong elements, or if your attribute value doesn't work with another attribute value, um, 
the, 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 the tool uh, validator, which is inside the tool, is going to say ex tell you exactly where, what column, what value is wrong. So with this, you can work in an iterative way. Um, so, what's missing is um, XML declaration. Well, it looks like it because it's not found. So, as you can see, this object can be moved around. Um, uh, are you moving it around? Yes, it, I, I can drag it. And I can actually resize it on my screen. And it will actually go above, slide above other open windows. Notice that... Um, if you downsize it, or if you uh, increase the size, the, uh, the, the way that the, the layout of the text, the layout of the text changes. So it's the same document, but depending on the size, it will, uh, the layout of the text changes. So this is one example of an error. Okay, so keep this in mind, this small object, thank you Aurélien for programming it earlier, uh, this is uh, a fragrance slide which actually co comes over your open slide. Is it written with FSD, uh, FSDL language? Yes, it's an actual slide. It, made as a designed as an error message but uh, yes it uses FSDL so in the contextual menu I, I, I clicked on the uh, I made a right click I have different functions here um, I have uh, the header you know large font you can see the address which is uh, Hello world, the test star hello world. So if I had another one, um, I could put a second site. I could, we're going to do this later. But that way you can uh, find, uh, with a right click, you can find which one you're editing if you have multiple sites. So you would not make us another hello world. No, it would be a different name. I would have to come up with another name. Okay, so small font, mid, average or large font. You can reload, so obviously the same thing happens because I haven't changed anything to the content, so I'm still getting the XML parsing error. And uh, we, I have this function, which is really important if you are a developer. This menu will only um, appear when triggered by the developer. It's, it's Disable Scaling Factor. So, let me just clarify this. When you look at the size of the Frogance site, uh, my screen is 1280 pixels. I don't have that many pixels here. Right. Le canva, voilà, je retrouve pas mon canva. Right. That's what you said earlier. Um, that's the, the, the frame you described earlier. Fragrance player adjusts the size of the of, of, uh, depending on the context uh, it is executed. So since we're on a computer screen, a factor d'échelle a été appliqué. A particular scale factor was applied. So, given, depending on this, the, the, the context, and again, taking the existing uh, canvas or frame, the player is going to adjust the size to make it comfortable, comfortable and, and user friendly for uh, the user. Uh, which is nice if you're a user, but it's not nice if you're a developer. Uh, and, and developers really need to, don't want to have to go through the resizing. So, 
So here there's this function which is called disabling, disable or um, enable uh, the scaling factor. And this will give you the actual rendered scale. 640480. This is exactly how it was calculated. So, for this site, um, what you want is to see it in its actual design uh, size, and that way you can uh, adjust things. But simply for visual reasons, for visual comfort, it's better to do this. So this is a version for developers. Uh, so this the scaling factor is accessible right on the main in the menu and uh, for the general public this developer feature or function will uh, will only work if you change the settings of the software because we don't want to be this uh, we don't want this to be you know any trouble for um, end users so and you can also see the, the, the source code. Uh, source code will be accessible if you want to. Again, this is primarily for um, developers. So the source code is here. It's on my computer, so I don't need it. But uh, if you're a little bit like for websites, it's interesting to see the, the source code of a web page because it, uh, you know, that way you understand how it's being designed and simply um, you can understand. So for Frogans, it's the same thing. You can access to the source codes, the source document that is behind uh, a site. So, XML parsing error, once again. Right, the FSDL document is an XML document. Using XML, Grammar. With XML, you need to put, add this little markup. Let me increase the font, and uh, let me also tell my software that the FSDL we're developing here is XML. So, are you using uh, software to edit FSDL? Uh, no. Well, I'm using I'm use, using a word processor. Uh, a somewhat improved word processor because it recognizes that I'm working on XML and therefore it's giving me some uh, when I write encoding equal and I hit once it it places the cursor at the right right place so now it, the system recognizes I'm a developer but um, I don't need a, a, any specific software simply all I need is um, is a word processor and um, and you can see that colors are also displayed on the screen. You can choose your colors. These are not necessarily my favorite colors, but uh, it's uh, quite helpful. Uh, can you read? For those of you who are in the audience, can you read? Is this uh, other fonts readable from where you are? Yes. Okay, very good then. So I've just added a markup. It's an XML declaration. So now that I'm now, now, now that I've done this, something will happen. So we've now made one step. So the parser, which actually looks into the validity of your uh, code, tells you that there is a root element which is missing. Okay. So with that, I'm going to go back. As I told you earlier, we've published. A number of documents, including this one. This one contains everything. So it's fragrance.org. Then you go into FSDL. So the FS, uh, FSDL elements and attributes. So this it says there is a root element missing. This root element is the fragrance-fsdl. So I'm simply going to cut and paste, and I'm going to give it an attribute, which is version. Okay, so for those of you who don't know this, uh, notice the, um, the uh, editing. Um, XML or FSDL. You open a markup. You have a markup to open, a markup to close. And uh, version is displayed in a different color. That would be an attribute, an attribute of... Uh, the uh, fragrance uh, dash FSDL um, 
element. Yes, so this is the root element of FSDL with a version attribute which is 3.0. Now, referring to the document, it's, it says it's mandatory, which means if I, re if I were to remove it, I would more, most likely get an error. Let's give it a try. Okay, it says the value of the uh, version attribute has not been utilized previously, which is a little awkward. Um, right, Damien? But Damien's always right. So there is an error. And it has something to do with the um, version attribute. Um, so, I'm, so I've just added version or put it back. So, anyone could test this. I'm sure that some of you are actually uh, way further down the road. So, it says line 3, column 1, one or more layer child elements are missing. So, once again, can we... show this, the uh, FSDL 3.0 elements. So what it's telling me is that I need to put layers. And again, remember I told you that layers were very important in Frogon's sites. Let me so come back to the code. So I'm going to put some layers. So Jean-Emmanuel, you can put all kinds of things in a Frogon slide. slide. Um, Let's um, go back to the, the table of contents. Let's do something really basic. Let's put a resource, a graphic resource. Res draw, so that's a geometric shape. So let me just downsize this because I'm going to be doing some coding. So no, here is the res draw. So I'm going to make this resource, uh, res draw resource. And again, I'm just following the instructions. So I need to identify the resource. It's a res ID, which is an I, a resource identification. All the resources will have um, its own ID. And um, this is um, how a layer can call upon that resource. Let's call it draw one. Or res draw. Res draw one. There you go. Res draw one. And then the second attribute is size. So if I make a very large, if I were to make a very large resource, for example, something that uh, occupies the entire rendering canvas, it would be 640 times 480, 640 by 480, okay, that's what it says, that's my, these are my maximum values, these are pixels, yes, pixels, and I could have a third uh, attribute, which is figures, so we could pick a square, not very fun. We can have rounder shapes, so something like this. A round edge. Um, let's try an ellipse. So all this is mandatory. Res ID, size, figures, and we have strokes. So with strokes, you can decide if you just want one line or if you want an actual surface. Okay, so I'm going to put, put it on off, which means that it's going to give me a full ellipse. Okay, so I've noticed that you were using uh, check marks, um, single check marks, double check marks. Yes, um, you can use both. Typically, I use the single ones, but the uh, or markups. Um, maybe it's uh, it's the um, the word processor. See, it doesn't do the indentation indentation automatically. Um, which is fine. For la clarté, puisque toute notre documentation. 
utilise effectivement des simples guillemets. Our documentation uses uh, simple check marks, uh, so I'm going to just transform these uh, double check marks into single check marks. Complétion automatique. And it doesn't really matter if the annotation is uh, très propre et conforme à nos exemples. Je There we go. Pour, uh, Thanks for pointing that out to me. Avant que j'ai tapé 500 lignes de texte. Um, it's better to say it now than after 500 lines of codes. Voilà. <coughs> okay. So, je vais peut-être quand même regarder ce qui se passe. Let's now take a look. Là, vous avez défini une ressource. J'ai défini une ressource. Now we've defined a resource. Et ça n'a pas l'air de lui avoir fait grand-chose. Well, il me dit toujours que c'est still telling me that it's that it wants layer. J'ai réussi à mettre un élément. So I've actually managed to put an element, and it. Comme je sais que vous êtes très curieux. Vous avez envie de savoir ce qui s'est passé. It looks fine. So you're probably wondering. Par exemple, j'avais. What would have happened if I if I had put three Fs? Peut-être que j'aurais eu un petit problème. Voilà. Et là, que voilà. It says. Ça mérite vraiment un agrandissement. Here we go. Let me magnify this line five column sixty six. The value off is not one of the possible values of this chuck attribute. On a que le droit quand on est off. You can choose either on or off. But with two Fs, not with one F. Par itération au niveau du développeur, il n'y a pas à relire la doc. So you don't have to read this, the documents again. To if you make a mistake like this, no need to refer back to the documents. The system will tell you. The validator will tell you immediately what you did wrong. Il me reste toujours cette histoire de calque. Je vais le remettre un peu plus petit momentanément. So let me get back. Je vais retourner dans la documentation. Let me go back to the documentation. Finalement, pourquoi avoir de la mémoire quand on a une documentation Ça sert à rien. Et donc ici, je vais aller chercher un layer. So I'm going to get a layer. Okay, because the system told me I have to create layers. So we have quite a few here. Okay. So let's. Et puis on va créer un élément layer rapidement. Create a layer element. Vous le voyez comme moi. A une un identifiant. Donc, so we have a layer ID. How do you want to call it? Layer one. Layer one. So far so good. Leap out. On voit que c'est un attribut. Leap out. Leap out. You have to include. J'en parlais tout à l'heure rapidement. And as I said before, leap out a trois valeurs possibles. Leap out has three values: all, lead, and vignette. Okay. So that's what we discussed earlier. Absolutely. So leap out at this point, we're going to say all. So this layer, this particular layer, is going to be included in my two representations: lead and vignette. Alors, okay, my le troisième side. attribute, tout ça est dans un ordre remarquablement logique, me demande quelle est la ressource que vous souhaitez donc je vais ajouter à la base le container qui va permettre d'afficher le contenu. Donc je vais dire que j'en ai qu'une seule de toute façon, donc je vais prendre celle que j'ai, c'est-à-dire ResDraw1. Je vais prendre celle-là, ResDraw1. La question suivante so, me dit, c'est est optionnel, on me dit, euh, est-ce que vous souhaitez... Euh, donc, retourner euh, la voilà, retourner l'image, ajouter des Would you filtres, like to like to, uh, add filters, euh, ajouter du flou, de l'opacité, like euh, gérer une create position, opacity or an angle. La position, on se rend compte ah, que as you can see, the position is mandatory. Là, vous proposer, so, on, va, on reviendra sur les attributs optionnels. We'll come back to the optional attributes before uh, later. But at this point, let me just uh, position it right in the middle. In Alors là, par rapport à size tout à l'heure, il faut bien dire. Okay, so again, in terms of size, we're not defining the size right now. We're simply we have this predefined size. And here, what you're doing is you're putting it right 640 par 480 in the middle. 640 by 2, 480 by 2. So 320, 240. Si on peut revenir au schéma. Right. So coming back to my earlier. Illustration. This is the rendering canvas which I drew. Remember, the origin is zero, top left, and then uh, horizontally we are going up to, to 640, and uh, on the side we are going from zero to 480. So let me just develop this a little bit. Could you explain size first? Size of your res ID, uh, res, uh, res draw. So this is the rendering canvas. Okay, so I've organized, I've zoomed, sorry, on one of the rendering canvases, 
Et donc la position sur laquelle the, j'ai fabriqué une ressource, I've created a resource, en mémoire, on va dire, elle est préparée. Et maintenant pour la positionner, it's prepared. So now I'm going to position it. I want to be able to place it anywhere. Là, choisi, évidemment, le centre. So I've actually picked the, the geometric center of uh, this rendering canvas. Et alors vous allez me dire oui mais la ressource. So, so 380 to 40. Yes. So if the resource is uh, quite big, how is it going to be positioned? Is it uh, going to be positioned according to its uh, top edge, bottom edge, etc.? But if you get back to code and the documents available, if we can flip back to the computer, yep, you see that there is an align optional attribute that says if I do nothing, it will center it in the middle center. So my resource is going to be centered around the position I have indicated here. So we'll test this later. In order to see how I can do things which are slightly more funny. Third and probably last thing is the combine attribute. So I cut and paste here. So that's interesting for people who are going to design uh, enhanced graphic objects because that's the way the layer is going to be positioned in the rendering canvas. And quite okay, typically we'll have an add and then we'll make tests. Add means I'm going to position my resource above what had been defined before. So what had been defined before? Absolutely nothing. So I'm on the first position layer and I just add it. Okay. And now we'll try and reload. And we get this. Well, thank you for applauding my first Frogan slide made online.